ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 10, Prahlad, the best among exalted devotees, text 40. Yatha yatha bhagavato Bhaktya paramaya bida Nipas chayad yayad yas satyam Hare stach chintaya yuyu Yatha yatha bhagavato Bhaktya paramaya bida Nripas chayad yayad ya satyam Hare stach chintaya yuyu ಯು ಭಾಗವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್ಯಾಭವತ್
his servants in the trees, land, animals, plants, and water in the Lord's abode. Because of constantly thinking of these features, one acquires a transcendental position. Kings like Shushupal, Dantavakra, Kangsa, Pandraka, Narakasura, and Shalva were all similarly delivered. This is confirmed by Madhvacharya. Pandrake, Narake, Chaiva, Shalve, Kamse, Charukmini, Abhishtas, Tu Harir Bhaktas, Tad Bhaktya Harim Apipire. Pandraka, Narakasura, Shalva, and Kangsa were all inimical towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But because all these kings constantly thought of him, they achieved the same liberation, Swarupya Mukti. The Jnana Bhakta, the devotee who follows the path of Jnana, also attains the same destination. Even the enemies of the Lord achieve salvation by constantly thinking about the Lord. What is to be said of pure devotees who always engage in the Lord's service and who think of nothing but the Lord in every activity? Yata yata bhagavato bhaktya paramaya bida Nripas chayad yaya ya satnyam haresta chintaya yayu. By devotional service, pure devotees who incessantly think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead receive bodies similar to His. This is known as Harupya Mukti. Although Shishupal, Dantavakra, and other kings thought of Krishna as an enemy, they also achieved the same result. Namo Vishnu Bhadaya Krishna Pristai Bhutta Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tanamane Namaste Sarasutunde Ve Gauravani Bhacharane Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paskatya De Siddharane In the Padma Purana it is said, Smarta Vyak Sarato Vishnur Vismarta Chatu Na Kinchit Sarva Vidi Nisedya Syur Etiyar Eva Kinkara Smartavyaksaratam Vishnur. That one should always remember Vishnu, Krishna. Vismartak Jatu Nakincha. And at no time should one forget him. Sarva Vidi Nisedya Syur. So there are Vidis and the Nishedas. Vidi means the things that we're supposed to do, and the Shedas are the things that we're not supposed to do. If one follows this one, Injunction to always remember Krishna and ne- never forget him. Then the result is that all these nishidas, nishadas, 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 and these vidis, they're automatically fulfilled. That if one is in the light of the sun, then there is no question of darkness. If one is, if we're actually conscious of Krishna, then all the illusory energy that we're now afflicted by or influ- influenced by immediately goes away. Or in our case, will gradually go away by practice of trying to think about Krishna. Now thinking about Krishna is usually done in a relationship. As it mentions here that those who are advanced in devotional service they can think of Krishna in the relationship of a gopi or a cowherd boy or a mother or a parent or the water or the trees or the plants or the animals in Vrindavan. But it's not recommended that we do that. Otherwise, if we jump to that level of consciousness, which comes after Samadhi, Swarup City, Vastu City, Srup City, a very advanced stage after the stage of a Sakti, that we artificially try to think of Krishna in a certain relationship, <coughs> then the result is we might get into a lot of trouble. For instance, I, as I said, when I was, first time I went to Mayapur, around 1974 or 72, I can't remember, but I met one of my friends there. He had moved to Mayapur. 
And he started to associate in Vrindavan with the Babaji's there. And he was interested in that, as the devotees didn't know very much, but they were interested in that Sarup city. What is my Sarup city? So they went to the Babaji's and he asked them, what is my Sarup city? And the Babaji told him, you're a peacock. So his sadhana was, when I saw him, he was going, coo, coo, we. How do they, they make it like a cat? Meow, meow, meow. So that was his sadhana. So we can imagine that he became one of the peacocks in Vrindavan. Not necessarily in Krishna's pastime. But definitely he was, by such practice, you think of a peacock at the time of death and become a peacock. Or if you think of a cow, then you'll become a cow. Or if you think of a gopi, you'll become a lady in your next lifetime. So whatever you think of, that's what you're going to become. Now, if you think of a cowherd boy, will you become a cowherd boy? Maybe. Wind up in a farm somewhere. (laughs) Not necessarily in Christian consciousness, though. But that's not the purpose of our Christian consciousness movement. So therefore, how should we think? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us, Yari Deka Tari Kaha, Krishna Upadesh, Amara Agaya Guru Hara Tari Desh. We should think that we're servants of Krishna's servants. And that whoever we meet, we should try to help others become conscious of Krishna. In other words, we should be in the mood of a servant of Krishna's servants. There's no harm in that because the basic sir, the basic ras is service. If we're in the mood of being a servant, we're safe. Servant of Krishna's actual representatives. Everyone in this material world is a servant of someone. If we cho- choose to become a servant of Krishna's representative, then we make spiritual progress. Taking initiation doesn't mean I become free from all my obligations. It means I become obligated to do everything as a servant of Krishna's servants. Uh, initiation is supposed to be giving up our false ego, that I'm something other than dasa, dasa, anudasa. But if one doesn't accept oneself as dasa, dasa, anudasa, well, after initiation, then the initiation has little meaning. It's just a formality. But if one is in the mood of service, if one actually wants to develop the mood of service, just like Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, Manmana Bhava Mad Bhakto Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru Mame Vaisha Si Satyam Te Pratijani Priyosime. This is Krishna's final instructions in Bhagavad Gita. He spent the other approximately 690 verses trying to tell us something. Now he's going to tell us what he was trying to tell us. And the first thing he tells us is manmana, think about me. Now, no one can think about Krishna without hearing about him. Therefore, we find in Prabhupada's books, especially in that particular purport, you can count the number of times Prabhupada says Krishna. The idea is we should hear about Krishna. We can write long, long purports and give big, big explanations, but at the end of the day, we don't remember Krishna. Therefore, Prabhupada decided in that particular purport to say Krishna, 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 Krishna. Every sentence says Krishna in it. Why? Because we're supposed to remember Krishna. That's the whole point. Now, the unfortunate thing is if we chant Hare Krishna and we don't remember Krishna, that's quite unfortunate. That's called Nam Abbas, or actually Nam Aparad. If we say Krishna and we don't remember Krishna, that means that we're going to remember something else. So that means Krishna doesn't become something else. It means it will become something else. Therefore, Krishna not only says Manmana, but Madbhakto. 
just by hearing about Krishna, hearing about Krishna. And even if we remember Krishna, that will not bring us to the platform of becoming conscious of Krishna. We have to, mud bhakta, we have to become devoted to Krishna's activities. And in this age, it means devoted to Krishna's mission, the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it says that anyone who believes that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he doesn't accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> guess what he's called? Or on the other hand, if one accepts Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he doesn't accept Lord Krishna, guess what Prabhupada says he is? Jagannath Sutta, bro. Take a guess. Well, that, would, that wouldn't be so bad. We're all rascals. <laughs> Ananta, what do you think he says? What's that? A demon. A sura. <laughs> Not an atheist, just a plain ordinary demon. Because if you can't accept the Yuga avatar, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then you're in trouble. Because what are you going to do? You don't accept Yuga avatar. You can chant Hare Krishna, but if you don't chant in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for his mission, then what will be the value? You're going, Hare Krishna, please engage me in loving service, but you don't accept the loving, his form in the, as the loving servant. And if you accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but you don't accept his mission to distribute the holy name, you don't believe that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that Shrimati Rarani is the internal potency, then you can't get very far in Kali Yuga. Therefore, Madhvakdo means to take up the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada didn't, he wasn't successful just because he introduced the holy name. There are so many people coming down days all parts of the world, introducing the holy name, as well as many other names. But as far as making devotees, we don't see those people becoming devotees. Not of Krishna, at least. They become more and more entangled in their material concept of life, in spite of the fact that they're chanting Hare Krishna. They think now we're free to do whatever we like. Therefore, Manmara has to be followed by Mad Bhakto, Madhyaji. And if we actually become a devotee of Krishna, then we should develop the mood of worship. That we should take the hearing, chanting, and remembering, and serving seriously as an act of worship. Just like chanting Hare Krishna in the beginning means that we accept that Krishna is God, that he's proprietor, and then when we try to become his devotee, it means we accept his instructions. And when we yaji, we accept that we're supposed to love Krishna and namaskaru. Uh, if we try to love Krishna and we don't become humble, we don't become submissive, we don't surrender, then it's all a show. Therefore, namaskaru. And to what extent namaskaru? Uh, Sarva dharma for jaja. Krishna is asking to give up everything and surrender completely to him, and don't be in anxiety that something's going to be lacking, or we're going to... Therefore, Prabhupada writes in the purport of 1865, one should organize one's life in such a way is that throughout the 24 hours a day, one cannot help but think about Krishna. So that's the duty of the organization of ISKCON, to make sure that that's all people are going to do, is think about Krishna. That will be the success. We may get big, big buildings. We may get big, big, uh, distribute millions and millions of books. We may get millions of donations. But if we don't develop, if we don't get a pure devotee, then this mission is a failure. And if we try to get pure devotees, then everything else will come. Probably gives the example of the mouse. It builds a hole in the ground, and the snake comes and eats the mouse and lives comfortably in the hole. 
So if we become Krishna conscious, then people automatically, they will provide all the, Krishna will have them provide all the necessities for our spreading Krishna consciousness. But if we try to just get all the necessities and we don't become Krishna conscious, then Krishna will take everything away. Yes, Yanagrihami Karishe Tadanai Shanai. So all we do is have to follow the process, but that doesn't mean we're supposed to be lazy because the process is to also go out and tell others about Krishna. But we don't have to tell them about anything else. Of course, sometimes we have to indirectly, you know, to distribute books, we may have to compliment them in different ways. But that's not bad because everyone is actually an expansion of Krishna. So it's to flatter people is <laughs> if it means that they'll take a book and give a donation, uh, that's then our purpose is served. So my but then Krishna says, not only Sarva Dharma but the most difficult thing to give up our false ego our false identifications, uh, that's extremely difficult. Even we try to surrender, but Krishna says, idam te na tapaskaya na bhaktaya kadachana na cha shushushve vacham na chamam yobhisuyate. That we should not try to explain this knowledge to the nine devotees. Those who are envious of Krishna, those who are materialists, are those who are not interested in the process of devotional service. So it also takes some discrimination, expert discrimination, to know what to say to who in order to achieve Krishna's result. It's easy. Our minds will tell us so many things to say, and we love serving our minds because we think our minds are the most intelligent thing that exists. Whatever comes to my mind must be divine, because my mind is divine. So one has to become thoughtful and think about, pray to Krishna, a little submissive, to find out maybe Krishna has something else to say, other than what we think our mind, what our mind's telling us to say. So we stay, take a moment and think about what Krishna wants us to say, and then see if that works, we'll get some experience in thinking, relying on Krishna. Relying upon Krishna means something comes to my mind, it's not necessarily divine. If something comes to my mind, and it's, in the, it's from the scripture, or for one, those who are following scripture or repeating scripture, then it's more likely to be the right thing to say. It may not. If I take a moment and think, well, this is from the scripture, this Guru Sadhana Shastra, then is this actually appropriate? What will be the reaction? What reaction do I want? What result do I want? What is the result that Krishna wants? And then ask Krishna, is, will I, we'll get this the result that you want? And then Krishna is liable to give us some intelligence. He's not a dead stone sleeping in our heart. You know, wake up, Krishna. Oh, yeah, what, what's going on? Krishna is fully conscious. He knows exactly what's appropriate at every moment, at every second, to everyone. And if we ask him, he might tell us. And if we don't ask him, he'll never tell us. Asking Krishna is called praying. So praying means asking Krishna in a mood that we believe that Krishna actually can help us. Otherwise, we can ask, hey, Krishna, you got an idea? Oh, yeah, sure, thanks. Any other ideas? I don't like that one. No, no, prayer for mood so that Krishna gives us some intelligence that is clear. That's clear this is what Krishna wants and this is what I should do. This is what I should say. This is how I should think. Uh, that's called developing of our Krishna consciousness. And if we do that, and we take to that process, beginning with hearing about Krishna, thinking and remembering Krishna, think, remembering what we heard about Krishna, so we can apply it in our lives to become a, try to become a devotee. <coughs> then the result is, uh, then we will become dear to Krishna by becoming a good instrument for Krishna. Idam tena tapaska ya idam paramanguyam mad bhakti shvabadashiti bhakti mai param kritva mamai vaishatya samshaya 
The best way we can become an, dear to Krishna is become an instrument for Krishna. Not to try to take Krishna's position and think if we become great, we're the deliverer. Krishna is the deliverer. We have to become simply receptive to becoming a servant of the servant of Krishna's servants so that we become an actual instrument for Krishna, an empowered and efficient instrument for Krishna that actually fulfills Krishna's purposes. At the end, Krishna wants his other children to go back to the spiritual world. Uh, the only credit we'll ultimately get is that we'll go back to the spiritual world by becoming such an instrument. We're not, get, we're not collecting souls so that when I get back to the spiritual world, I have my own kingdom. Now I got so many disciples and I'm back in the spiritual world and they're all serving me eternally. <laughs> now we're collecting souls as a servant of Krishna's servants so that when we learn to actually become a, a servant, so we get back to the spiritual world, we'll become everyone's servant, not master of a few. <laughs> uh, Krishna is the master. Everyone else is a servant. Ekla, Ekra, Krishna, Saba, Ara, Britya. We're all servants. And that's what we're trying to practice, becoming a servant, a good instrument, not just a superficial instrument, but a profound instrument for Krishna's service, an empowered instrument. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Okay, thank you very much. Grandarash, my Bhagavatam, Kijai, Shilaprabhupad, Kijai, Gaur Pramananda.